Today I'm in the mood to paint cats, especially cat's eye, and I will be working on a um, watercolor uh, cellulose paper. It's 100% cellulose, there's no cotton in it. Uh, and even though I prefer cotton, this paper is really good um, quality uh, paper by the brand Claire Fontaine. 300 GSM, so it's pretty thick, and that's why I'm not gonna attach it to uh, the table. I'm just gonna keep it as is. And the um, texture is cold press, which means that um, there's a little bit of a texture, not crazy, but good enough to uh, capture that pigment and let it sink a little bit while we're working on layers. I'm particularly interested in uh, painting animals recently and <laughs> especially my favorite part is painting uh, eyes. That's why today's um, tutorial <laughs> is going to be focused on specifically painting the cat's eye. So really quickly I will outline the shape of the eye. I don't really care about uh, everything else around it. Of course, I'm gonna paint some fur and some basic tones to <laughs> not make this eye just like float in the air. Um, so it's all connected. So the eye is a sphere and I drew a circle, but because there's an eyelid of the cat, uh, it's covering a little bit of our eye. So visually it looks like an oval. It's not the perfect circle. It's not, uh, if it was a circle, I would have gone all the way up here, but this part is invisible to us. It's um, hiding behind the fur. <laughs> Somewhere here will be the nose of the cat. I don't really care about it. I'm not gonna pay too much attention painting it. It's probably gonna be some uh, very light layer, maybe wet on wet, a la prima style. Um, real quick, my main focus would be on the eye and all the beautiful turquoise color transitions. The iris is really, really small right in the center. There will be two highlights. I'm gonna have to work on them. So I'm marking to know where they're going to be. They're gonna be a beautiful shade here under the eye. Just like so. And I think now we are ready to paint. All right, so I removed my pencil line uh, with the kneadable eraser to make the sketch lighter. Um, it's not really that crucial in this particular sketch because all the dark lines, they're gonna be dark with uh, paint as well. So the paint is gonna cover the pencil line, but this is just, uh, <laughs> I'm a creature of habit, so <laughs> this is what I like to do when working on watercolor and preparing my um, paper. So here I would like to start with raw sienna and painting actually everything that's around the eye. Go here is to prepare this area and any potential uh, color that's going to be attached to the eye <laughs> so that later down the road uh, we're not going to have weird uh, issues with um, eye being detached from the rest of the body because of the sharp outline. So, I want to 
bring the color naturally all the way down to the eye and then kind of build it in. You're gonna see what I mean when I will uh, keep painting. So I start with the lightest tone, raw sienna, very transparent, very light. Now I take burnt sienna, working with a round natural squirrel brush, adding a little bit of blue. I use um, Indian Trend Blue just to make it slightly darker and pretty freely drop this darker tone and sort of let it flow now some of the parts uh, went around uncontrollably so those parts I will be correcting I would also like to maybe slightly intensify the color here above the nose here in the corner of the eye with my burnt sienna can be any type of uh, warm brown color that you have in your palette. Then I'll get a very light transparent black. Just dump it here. So as you can see, I'm literally just dumping paint and because the layer was wet um, the colors are moving around smoothly so now my job is to kind of define the direction of all those strokes with uh, a semi-wet brush so i'm rinsing my brush on the tissue in my left hand If I don't, the brush will release a lot of water and create a cauliflower effect, which can be nice and creative, but um, not in this case. <laughs> I don't want any cauliflowers on the face of my cat. Also, I need to keep in mind that over here we have lighter parts around the eye. It's not perfectly white, but it's also not dark brown uh, and by removing the paint lifting it I kind of free up the space from this paint from the color and yet some light brownish tone is left on paper which is just perfect for what I need now I'm switching to a smaller brush. I also now feel like I put the nose way too low. It should be a bit higher up. That's why I would need to remove this pencil line at some point and put the nose somewhere here. So I intentionally just created a cauliflower right now. <laughs> over here and uh, this is where I will place the nose and now I can't remove it just yet uh, because the paper is wet and um, I would need to wait just a bit now I take oil brown and slightly mixed with black I would like to introduce it right closely to the eye, to the outline of the eye. And if your stroke is pretty sharp, you want to blend it, blend the edge with a semi-wet brush. Again, you rinse your brush at the tissue. Don't let 
any liquid on your painting right now because it's going to create unwanted cauliflower effects. Unless, of course, you do want them. <laughs> Now I'm going all around the eye and you can see that this is the dark area around the eye that I'm working on right now. And instead of painting inside the eye, that would have been probably logical for a lot of people. For now, I'm working on the area that is exactly around it, like a frame, because I can create all the shadows all the transitions from dark to light color on the fur of the cat and then building the eye and get the most natural effect that I want. Every time you're not satisfied with the direction of your paint, you can always lift it while it's still wet. The moment your pigment gets dry, it's done. <laughs> So now I am diluting this super transparent gray-ish outline that I lay down on paper. Dilute and stretch into the face of the cat. And I guess now I need to wait a bit until this is perfectly dry. And I guess now I'll just need to wait for the paper to get fully dry and then I can continue working on my uh, tones. Alright, so uh, the way to check if the paper is dry is to carefully touch it with the other side of your hand. Uh, and if the paper is cold, it means it's still wet, so there's still water in it. But if it's normal <laughs> room temperature, um, and uh, also you feel like there's no humidity in it, uh, it is dry. And uh, what I did, I used a hair dryer to speed up my process because I didn't want to wait for too long. And now we are ready to continue. I will remove the pencil line. Sometimes when the water already touched the pencil line, um, yeah, it will stop you from uh, removing the stroke, the pencil stroke. So be warned <laughs> that mm -hmm. it's better to remove all your pencil lines, all the unwanted lines before you actually apply water or paint. Because after that, it's going to be over. Now I'm improvising the nose. I move it a little bit higher up than, than what I actually sketched. I mixed the uh, pink with a bit of orange to have this cute nosy color. And adding brown in the corners. And I'll get some black, neutral black, with some brown. And 
place the shadows and kind of mark the nostrils over here and of course it leaked into <laughs> the place I didn't want it to go so now we're gonna have to go on a rescue mission so when things like this happen first you can just remove the paint with a dry brush almost dry brush or you can direct the paint into a different direction so change the direction uh, and also don't forget when you remove the paint you also remove the bottom like the, the, the layer that was before that the first one so you need to kind of refill it now that that's done I'll smooth out the edges just like so don't like this weird leaking paint over here but that's not a big deal because I wanted to refresh the whole face anyway I'll take a orange cadmium orange and pretty light uh, I will carefully touch the nose and go up this place that looks lighter now again smoothen out the edges now my nose completely <laughs> leaked up into the rest of the face so my goal here is not to necessarily paint like a realistic fur I just wanted to match the tone so that the eye the eye will be very vibrant right and with the proper deep tones and everything so the area around it i would like it to match the the tone so it's as uh, dark and layered <laughs> as the eye going to be uh, so i'm anticipating this and creating this depth of tone immediately but I'm not going to go as far as painting every single hair that I see. It's more to show the contrast of light and shadow, essentially just working on tones, as I said. Also, any sharp strokes, you want them to soften up. I'm doing this with a semi wet brush, just diluting sharp edges. Don't wait too long, otherwise, um, it will get dry and you won't be able to dilute anything. And now, with the smaller brush, freeing up this area. Reestablishing <laughs> the nose over here. Adding some texture on the cheeks.
So over here, I want to smooth out those strokes. Make sure your brush does not carry water. Otherwise, it's just gonna push everything out and create cauliflower effect. So you want to blend those colors carefully with a dry brush, almost dry brush. And here I will reestablish the nose. <laughs> I also take a very light blue and add here just to create some sort of a light shadow under the nose. This area is supposed to be fluffy white cheeks. All right, and I think I will just let it be and uh, <laughs> and I will start working on the eye. I'll start with the lighter stone and I'll take a bit of ceruleum, lighter transparent, and place it with a natural round brush on the eye. Here, be careful to go around the highlights that we marked earlier. And make sure that this distance between the two are not too far apart because I feel like mine is way too far now. I'm gonna keep it this way, but for you, I suggest to keep it closer so there's not so much uh, space in between. Now I'll take a bit of yellow and drop it here. to lighten up this area. Now, if you feel like the cauliflowers are going to happen now, you need to help it out and smooth it out with the semi-wet brush. At the same time, I'll take a very transparent pink and drop it all around the iris. It's okay if you cover the iris as well, because it's going to be black anyway. It's going to uh, cover any color <laughs> that you're going to put there.
So now I'm carefully stretching down those pink layers with the brush. The brush doesn't have any paint, it's dry, but because I'm pulling down the actual color, it naturally drags it down because it's still wet and creates those nice strokes. don't want to have too much <laughs> pink in your eye, it's going to look weird. So if you did remove it or add a little bit blue to turn it into purple, purple will look more natural. And to make sure that the eye doesn't look flat, we need to create volume. That is why I'm so <laughs> focused on color transitions. So here in the bottom, we're going to see the darkest blue and also all around the eye. So it's the sphere, remember? Everywhere around the sphere, we're going to have darker tone. which I'm adding now. My darker tone consists of blue mixed with a little bit of black. Now I'll rinse my brush completely and with this dry brush, I'm smoothing out the edges. You might not even have sharp edges because the, um, the whole area is wet, so the colors are probably blending nicely on their own. And now I take nice and bright blue and add it around the iris. And again, rinse the brush, blend the edges. So here on top, we also need a bit of purple shade. And here and there, I'll drop a bit of purple. Now I'll take a very thin brush, it's called Ricker brush, and with it I'll create a little bit of a texture on the eye. And if you're not sure that your brush can draw a very, very thin, delicate line, better not do it. We don't need uh, <laughs> thick strokes in the eye. I 
we'll do the same with blue. You also need to make sure you follow the sphere, you follow the shape of the eye. So the stroke should be a little bit bended. Now I think some of those strokes should be less vibrant, so I'm diluting them with the semi-wet brush. So the brush carries water, but just a tiny bit, just enough to remove the stroke, like so. And I'll let the eye <laughs> to dry and rest, and we will add another layer later to make it look more to them. So now that the eye is dry and the whole painting is dry, I would like to go ahead and paint another very thin layer of cerulean. By the way, you could have um, <laughs> painted those uh, highlights um, with masking liquid so that you don't need to, you know, go around every time. Um, not a big deal, but uh, could be pretty useful. <laughs> now again, taking bright blue and refreshing bright blue right around irises, the iris. And because using Ceruleum, I also created this wet layer. Basically, now we are working wet on wet. And this gives me an opportunity to create nice and soft transitions on the eye. I start working on the shadow part <laughs> by adding brown mixed with black. Now blend it in a bit more of purple, darker tone, not the bright purple, dark. Blend it in. So the idea is to achieve this soft transition from the darkest color uh, to the lightest that's moving it into the center of the eye. Now I'm outlining the eye with brown. Clean the brush and blend the edge. Same here, created the line around the eye, this darkest area, and blend the edge. Also right up, I'll add concentrated black for the most darkest part of the eye, the, the eyelid.
And finally, very carefully clean the brush, dry it, and a little bit go touching, barely, 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 barely touching this black stroke, diluting it and making it nicely connecting with the rest uh, of the face. Also here I would add a bit of tone because it looks pretty pale to me. I'm doing it wet and dry and immediately smoothing out sharp strokes so they blend in. Here, I still feel like I'm missing more uh, volume to make this eye look like a sphere even more. I'm adding a very, very light, transparent, dark purple. And at this point, I feel like my paper starts um, <laughs> losing its quality. So it's as many layers as it can take at this moment. It's not cotton, so I can't just indefinitely apply <laughs> layers. Um, so I'll leave it at that. And of course, we need to paint the iris. Dry, sharp strokes. Thin brush. Don't make it uh, too long and don't, don't create any sharp corners. So now uh, what I would like to do, I would like to take some blue and add it right at the iris, literally touching it. And with a super thin brush and this very dark blue, dark but vibrant, I am creating super thin, tiny strokes that are coming right off the iris. Now some of them look pretty fat, so I need to either remove them or dilute them. I want to only keep those that are nice and thin. Also, don't place them symmetrically. There should be different distance between them. One is longer, another is shorter. Do not try to make it equal. So this way we're creating some sort of texture inside the eye, which is the most interesting part to me when I'm working on bad portraits, because the eye is something that makes this particular animal recognizable by their owners. <laughs> and the final part would be to add a little bit of um, shade right inside the actual highlight so it's not pure white but there is a tiny bit of blue color reflected inside this white area also i'd like to slightly correct the shape 
like so. I don't like this part, it looks detached in my opinion. So I'll, instead of painting more, <laughs> I'll try to just remove the paint. And because my paint wasn't stainy, I could just add some water and remove this part. And maybe a little bit of this part. So the, those two edges are not too close to each other and it looks unfinished. All right, so if you were painting with me, uh, take a moment to stand up and evaluate your painting um, and decide if there's anything that needs to be Add it. Here I feel like the tone should be a bit darker. Do you match the same tone of the eye? controlling sharp edges and now it's more harmonious here's the dark part here's the dark part part and here as well so now we have more harmonious picture all right that's it for today i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and see you in the next one